It's a big week for a special envoy handpicked by South Korean President Moon Jae-in to go to North Korea with a mission. I'm Alex Jensen for NK Now, discussing that mission today and what we can expect. So the man chosen by President Moon is his top security advisor, Chung Yong. yong He will lead a five-member delegation this Wednesday. And the first thing we can say about this team is that it represents consistency. The delegation is the same group that went to North Korea in March and laid the foundation foundations for some of the most impressive progress in inter-Korean ties in years. Presidential Office spokesman Kim hee gom explained yesterday that the reason the delegation consists of the same officials from the first delegation is because the government considered the importance of continuity in dialogue with North Korea in achieving the objective of the North Korea trip. That brings us to the next an arguably most important question. What is that objective? Seoul officials have been emphasizing denuclearization remains the number one mission for President Moon when he meets Chairman Kim Jong-un in the North Korean capital later this month. There are a few obstacles to cross first, however, including deciding when exactly this year's third inter-Korean summit will take place. But you wouldn't ordinarily need a special envoy to fill in a calendar. It seems inter-Korean ties are being directly affected by the North's dialogue deadlock with the United States, as a quick glance between the lines shows us. For example, when Seoul's presidential office tells us that Moon wanted to send a special envoy because there should be no more delay, the implication is that Pyongyang isn't quite as keen on this summit as South Korea. Okay, let's actually take a look at what Seoul's officially saying about this trip. We've been told to expect extensive consultations based on North Korea's agreements with South Korea and the US this year. That means potentially touching on vast issues such as denuclearization and formally ending the Korean War, but also more particular challenges like establishing an inter-Korean liaison office which seems to be going ahead now after a holdup over the Washington Pyongyang deadlock. All this really goes to show again how tied together South Korea and the US are, even if President Moon insisted that inter-Korean ties can potentially improve independently. And there was an interesting statement by the president's chief of staff on Facebook today. Im jong sok wrote that he expects Special Envoy Chung to fix a date for President Moon's Pyongyang trip this fall, but he also described his role as priming water to enable a North Korean a visit by US Secretary of State Mike Pompeo and progress in the denuclearization talks between the North and the US. Almost reluctantly, he also admitted, in the grim reality of diplomacy, realizing an historic change without the strategic patience and consent of the US is simply impossible. Another thing to say, though, about Chung's trip is that it will be quick. We're told it will last less than a day rather than the days of talks we saw him involved in earlier this year. It's certainly not clear whether he'll meet Chairman Kim as he did in March. And maybe that points most assuredly to what we mentioned before, that the basic agenda here is to book the summit date and prevent any delays, especially as later this month, world leaders will gather for the UN General Assembly and it would be good to have something to work on there in New York. So it will probably be left for President Moon to play the decisive role in bringing the US and North Korea back together and or Chairman Kim if he sends another friendly letter to the White House. That said, Seoul's delegation will inevitably gather other information too, including a sense of where Pyongyang's really at on some of those key issues like denuclearization, beyond the frustration it's shown over sanctions in state media.